In this video, we are going to work on the networking layer of our app. And for that, we will try to utilize async, await, and actor. So before starting, just make sure that you have already created your account for the IMDB movie API and you have already got your API key. So just make sure to replace the API key in the constant file. I have already did this for my for my file. So let's just go ahead and create a new folder. We will name it as networking. And the first file we want in here is the endpoints. Endpoints that we are going to utilize within this app. So let's start by creating an enum. And then we have, uh, for now, we will try to work on these four endpoints, the trending movies, the top rated movies, and the generate for the movies, and maybe the reviews, or we can name it as movie reviews. And for that, we will need movie ID as a parameter. And then we need uh, the path for these. So, Let's start by having a switch in here. So for the trending, I think you can get the bot from this, yeah. You can get the bot from this documentation as well. Uh, yes, I think they have the bot in like this. Yeah, this is the bot for them after this uh, ORG anything else is the path and make sure you have the api key so let's start for the trending we have the path for trending as trending slash movie slash v for tab top rated sorry return should be outside so for the top rated it is again slash three slash movie slash top rated for the genre it's Sorry, it's slash three slash genre slash movie list, and for the reviews, it's slash three slash movie, and then I think we need this movie ID here, and then we just have, I guess, reviews. Yeah. So that's it for the bots and let's just make this private so that outside we cannot access it outside because this is not a complete bot for the endpoint where we will actually have another variable let's name it as full bot and it will actually have the base URL and then the bot URL. So now this is the complete bot and this is just the endpoint, I would say the last part of the part. Okay, so the second file we need is the API constructor that the view models can use to construct API. So this will be a struct. And in here we need endpoint for support. And then we need parameters for the API and for the parents we will have our type alias. If any API wants to pass query for example so we will support that. So this parameter and if not provided we will just go with the empty one. And then we need the URL builder so let's name it as default URL builder so this will actually build the URL and we also need the error class for it okay so we will have a static function in here that will take API constructor and it will either throw an error or return a URL. So let's start by having URL components. 
so URL components string it should be API dot okay I think we need endpoint and then we need full path and if we can get this then we have to throw this error let's name it as invalid path so we can name it as yeah invalid path error let's throw it and after this we actually need to build the query parameter so we need another function here let's name it as build query params it will take parameters type and we can pass multiple in it and it will return an array of URL query item and then we need to first we need to use the compact map so that because this can have many values so let's convert them into a single so we have to use the compact map and then after this we can try the we try can try a simple map and uh, let's just try to let's just see if we can try to have it uh, I think we may need to use the flat map instead of compact here so for it let's start by having this and then we need to transform this now we have the keys and values so we can map it into our URL query, pair, query item so the first value will be key and the other would be value and then we can return it so then we can have URL components dot query items and we need to build query items from API dot endpoint dot or I think we need it from the API constructor directly and we also need to pass our default value for the parameter it is like an API key even if there is no other value then we this we, we have to pass this API key so even if you don't have any parameter this API key will still be going with each API call so yeah so, and make sure you have this API key in your constant or valid value for it and then we just need to get the URL from the URL components and if we couldn't get it then we need to throw the invalid URL error and in the last we can just simply return our URL so that's it for this class now we need another let's name it as movie service if you have watched my previous series for the plants UI app you may have noticed that we were using the plant service to get the data and it was actually static data at that time but for now since we are using the API call so this service will actually take or uh, get the data from the URI and provide to the UI classes so it, we will start with the actor and then we will have a method here let's name it as fetch data it is going to accept API constructor and it will be async method it can throw error and it will have a return type so for the return type we actually want this to be generic so any decodable type we can return it so let's start by first making the URL so we will try default URL builder and not the query builds but the simple build so for the api we will provide the api and then we can just call the api i guess so try await uh, url session dot share dot data from the url and then we just need to check if this is a valid response so let response equals to HTTP URL response and then we can check if response 
status code okay I guess let's complete this first so else we can have this error here we need an error clause in here to extend the error let's name it as maybe invalid response and if we don't get this then we can just throw a invalid response error and then it should be from the error clause like this and once we have this then we need to check if the response status okay so for some reason we are not able to get this let's just make sure we are using the proper yeah this is the your response and once okay i think this we just made this mistake with this variable it should have s after the end so now we will have the status code and make sure it is greater than or equals to 200 and it is less than or yeah it is less than 300 anything else we can declare it as a error so if the response is good then we can go ahead and i guess return the data or pass it from the json decoder dot decode type will be t dot self from the data so i guess that is that is from this uh from these things yeah we need to mark it with try so that's that's all i guess that's how our networking layer will look like now we can just go ahead and perform a simple networking call for the okay let's just first make a home view model be observable object we need to have movies here let's just name it as maybe top rated movies and then we can have list of movies and we can have another publish war and maybe we can name it as trending movies and then yeah then we need to have uh, our let's have our service class so we can name it as private or movie service equals to movie service and then we can have function fetch trending movies it will be async function let's start with catch block and we also want to have an error in here it's uh, useful for debugging so okay then then we can just check it uh, sorry it should be let's and then we can just simply check or simply get movie response so movie api response if we already have this movie clause remember so we have this response that we can directly take from it and then just make sure that you confirm to identifiable because we already have an id in here so we can do that so let's go back to movie uh, home view model and then in here uh, we will actually utilize that movie response and then we can just try await movie service it should fetch the data for the api constructor and for the endpoint let's use trending and once we have this let's mark this as main actor and then once we have it we can just uh, do this self trending movies equals to movie api response dot results so i guess we may not need trend self here so and for the error let's have an error message and we can name it as error and then 
passing the error as string and we can just copy the same method and maybe fetch the top rated movies and since these both methods will be almost same so you maybe you can have another enum to uh, and then you can pass it and maybe like which movie type you want to fetch and then you can just based on the type of enum you can uh, call the api and pass the result to the respective list and for the endpoint it will be top rated so that's it uh, from the view model let's go to the home view now we need to have this view model here let's have a state object private var vm equals to home view model and then we need to have this instead of this we can just have view model dot let's first have the trending movies and then instead of this we can just have movie in here and we don't need to pass in the developer preview movie you can use that and let's also for the grid for now because later it will be from the based on the uh, on the genre the user has selected but for now we can just use the top rated if it's the trending at top we can use top rated here just to see how it looks so we can just pass it and then we need to call our api so we can do this here with vm dot fetch let's search top trending first and then we can fetch top rated movies so yeah that's it from this uh, let's run it and see if this is working our networking here okay i guess it is working very nice so we have our images burning up nicely okay this is great we have our i guess trending movies at the top it looks nice and we have our top rated movies at the bottom so in the in the next video we will try to load the genre and then based on the genre user has selected maybe action adventure we will try to load the respective video, respective movies so that's it for this video thank you for watching